Who and how man was created is a question that has stirred the minds of humanity for many millennia. Despite the development of science, humanity has not yet found an answer to this question. There are many approaches to this issue. Some are convinced that man was created by God, the creator of all living things around. For others, there is also a higher mind that created all this, but it is no longer a religious figure, but rather fantastical. There are also supporters of the theory who believe that humanity originated on its own, evolving from other forms of life. Without intending to offend anyone, we will try to consider the arguments of all sides. In the first video, you examined the arguments of supporters of the higher mind that created humanity. This video sparked a lively discussion with our viewer, a staunch supporter of spontaneous generation. Today, we will be presenting the arguments of supporters of spontaneous generation, as well as those of our viewer. The final decision is yours, dear viewers. We invite everyone to a discussion, which, we are confident, will take place within the framework of respecting the opponent's point of view. The first argument in favor of spontaneous generation is the observed evolution that scientists from various fields record over a relatively short period. For example, geneticists have documented genome mutations, indicating its constant change. The genome is not a constant entity, it is in constant flux. Here is your evolution. Another example is various physiological adaptations of living organisms. Scientists have discovered the emergence of the ability of organisms to assimilate new types of food, including nylon and pinachlorophenol, which began to be produced in the 1930s. The external environment changes, and living organisms adapt to these changes. Yet another example, scientists observed lizards for 36 years. During this time, the size and shape of the head changed, bite strength increased, and new structures developed in the digestive tract. Additional examples include the development of bacterial resistance to antibiotics, plant resistance to pesticides, and the selection of agricultural crops and domestic animals. Paleontological Records This is a documented history of the development of the organic world, created based on the found fossilized remains of organisms and traces of their activity. It contains many gaps, as not all ancient organisms can survive in any form until our time. But it is sufficient for conclusions about the existence of progressive evolutionary development of living beings. The paleontological record can be presented as an evolutionary tree, also called the tree of life or phylogenetic tree. The circular diagram tree shows the classification of living organisms, illustrating the evolutionary relationships between different living species sharing a common ancestor. The tree of life is a natural classification, illustrating the workings of the evolutionary mechanism. The third compelling argument for spontaneous generation is the features of the structure of living organisms, morphology. Any living organism is derived from the old through small anatomical changes, skeleton, organs, plant parts, and so on. The next organism also takes the basis from the previous one and makes minor changes. If we look at these anatomical changes over a period, we will clearly see the workings of evolution. Living organisms will have common traits and differences, illustrating their origin from a common ancestor. Examples of Morphological Evidence Homologous organs, similar in structure but performing different functions. For example, the front limbs of monkeys for grasping and climbing trees, the front limbs of whales for swimming, and the front limbs of bats evolved into wings. Analogous organs, externally similar but evolved from different organs. For example, bird wings, modified front limbs, and insect wings, folds of the chitinous covering. Rudiments, organs that have lost their significance. For example, tail vertebrae in humans. And here is the viewpoint of our viewer. For a start, we have a very good answer to the question of how man was created. He wasn't. He evolved. The impact of the Miller-Urey experiment on society was not remotely strong. In fact, it wasn't much known about beyond scientific circles and did little, if anything, to change anyone's views as to the origins of man. 
In the meantime, the experiment has been successfully repeated using current models of the Earth's early atmosphere. There was no deliberate propaganda and purposeful PR to suppress any so-called refutation of Yuri Miller. No one aimed to impose the idea of the possibility of spontaneous life origin on society. That's not how science works. As to how the first cells came about, a lot of research has taken place and we now have several plausible scenarios. People who think cells are too improbable to have occurred naturally don't understand the science and or the maths. Transitional forms between different life forms are unknown to science. Hilarious. We know of literally billions of them. Any life that reproduces is transitional. The Cambrian explosion, far from disproving evolution, displays it in all its powerful glory. To save time, I've copied the following from Quora. People who think the Cambrian explosion disproves evolution theory are cherry-picking their facts. They focus on one fact, and one fact alone, which is the apparent speed of the explosion, and try to argue that this is not consistent with what evolutionary theory says should happen. Notwithstanding that, upon closer examination, we readily find that existing evolutionary theory quite easily accommodates the time frame in question. The Cambrian explosion occurred over a period of 10 to 40 million years. But this completely ignores all the other features of the evolutionary event.